Good morning. Welcome to day three of our daily flow series. No better way for me to start a day than letting go of the posture that I'm trying to build, of how I'm trying to hold myself up. I take an exhale. <sighs> Relax, let go. Oftentimes it's those compensations, um, that, that, that trying, that intention to hold ourselves up that causes a lot of tension and uh, imbalances. Uh, when, we, when it comes to walking and, and, and running and moving around the world, we actually start interfering with that when we, when we hold ourselves up with muscles that were not designed to hold ourselves up. <sighs> Another exhale, letting go. Now, today we're going to uh, do the next version of the castle breath. So the, f the ones we've been doing the last couple of days were with three balloons that we inflated. Today we're going to inflate seven bricks and we're going to do some alignment um, as well. So <sighs> connect with your breath, close your eyes, allow yourself to <sighs> let go. To reboot. Now from this collapsed position, we're going to be inflating all of these bricks from our lower back and our sides, the ribs. You can feel that. It's very subtle. But by placing your fingers on your sides of your ribs, and your lower back, you can actually start feeling the breath expand that area. And so we're going to inflate the first brick. We're going to go through this uh, fairly quicker than normal, um, just for the sake of time in these sessions. Uh, we're going to inflate three breaths per brick. Okay, you can do this one breath per brick. You can do this seven breaths per brick. Um, it's really up to you to do on your own time, but understand this concept of we're going to be building a tower of breath and our body is going to be like a puppet, a skin over that breath and really allow the breath to guide us into our full posture. Okay, This is a great way to start the day when we're feeling down, lower energy. Uh, today I woke up a little groggy. I've been fasting uh, for almost three days now. Um, it's uh, just something that my body was calling me to do, so I listened. It's all about the flow. So let's go. First red brick inflating from the back. Boom, three breaths and I've got my red brick of air. Let's inflate an orange brick on top of that red brick. Okay, yellow brick. So now I've got a yellow brick of air around the belly button. Now, the green brick is very important, especially for those with scoliosis, kyphosis. Um, this is a brick that we can actually start guiding the shape of and align our body with. So, for me, I have a concave curve on my left in my thoracic. So, I'm going to inflate my green brick into that side. Now, as I do that, I felt an alignment because what I'm doing, I'm actually derotating the rib cage. So if you know on which side your concave curve or your collapse is, the inside of your curve, then this is the side you want to breathe into. Oh, lovely. So I can feel the alignment happening. And this is the, this is the way I want to build my new posture. I don't want to have to like, unconsciously hold myself up. I want to build this on top of this breath that I'm building. So I'm going to do three more on that green brick because it definitely needs it. The green brick is our heart center 
It's highly magnetic. It's one of the most powerful energy centers we have in our body. It transmits an aura that people feel when you walk into a room. The best way to, a tr- uh, to transmit an amazing aura is to um, nurture and harness the energy inside you. So now we have four bricks. My upper body is still loose. I'm not holding any tension. I'm letting it be floppy. But I do have a, a tower of air right here that I can inflate if I let it go a little bit while I'm talking. And now I'm going to add on the, the blue brick, which goes from my throat to the, uh, to the face. And now I really start getting some height. My tower can sway. I can feel that flexibility, that flow of the tower. Now I'm going to add a purple brick right here. In between the eyebrows, deep inside the head. I don't know if you heard that, but that was an amazing alignment. Um, This is what it's all about. Uh, If we listen to the breath, our body will align on top of it. So then we're going to move on to the seventh brick. And it's going to be a golden white brick. And this brick is going to go from the top of our head to the other side of the universe. And it plugs into the other side of the universe. Don't forget to smile. So right now I'm imagining that brick connect to the other side of the universe and actually pull me up and elongate me. Then I can actually imagine three breaths going all the way around the universe, coming up into my lower back and continuing to the other side of the universe. Amazing. This is a very powerful breath, which is tapping into your metaphysical, your electromagnetic energy field. And that's what it's all about, because this is about finding a flow that we can do each day to build our best posture. So what should we do next? Well, we're flowing, we're aligning. Um, I would like to kind of show a little bit more about the alignment that uh, we did in that we can really find traction anywhere Um, now traction to me is actually decompressing the spine and that's what we were doing with the breath and you can actually do that by putting your hands on your knees and just leaning forward a little bit and what you're doing you're basically taking the car off the ground to change a wheel and you're doing that with your spine And if you've mapped your spine or you know your x-ray, you know where your concavities are, by breathing sideways into your concavity and then towards the back. So we're breathing here and then at the back in my situation. And then we're holding and tensing, just like we would in a gym when we're doing a plank or an isometric exercise, we're holding Uh, for a period of time, time under tension to to lock in those gains, to lock in those alignment gains. Now, we can do that with a bench, a stool like this. Uh, We can also do that with uh, bars and poles, but that's more advanced in in a different type of situation. So I want to give you a few things that you can do to align at home. Um, Keep in mind that breath is something that you can integrate into all kinds of movement. So let's check in to see how your deep squat is. How are your hips? Are they unlocked? Do you need to revisit some of the exercises from yesterday? Then perhaps that's your best thing to do today is to revisit some of those some of those moves we did. If you can get into a deep squat, a a deep squat with a flat foot, um, that's 
congratulations. It took me many years to undo the compensations and tightness that I had in the hips. Um, but this is a this is a great movement. Getting in here. Um, any obstructions, whether it's in your hips or your ankles, those are things to work on. We want to be able to pull off these these basic movements um, so that we can go into into long long years ahead. So uh, let's do the posture pyramid. So this is using uh, part of the traction and we can actually start integrating alignment. So I do want to explain what I mean by alignment because if we have a scoliosis, uh, then what we're going to want to do is actually derotate the rib cage. So scoliosis is usually a derotation of the rib cage. Kyphosis is that forward neck uh, posture like there. Both of them are going to benefit when we activate our postural pyramid. And that is the boot that we are rebooting, right? The lower abdominal core uh, and the middle upper back. So when we go into when we go into soft knees and we start hinging forward, we're not kind of bending forward like that. We're starting to lean forward like a door. Okay. We're activating our glutes, tucking them down, tucking them down, abdominal core braced and pushing down. So we're starting to feel like our hips are being pulled away from our head through our glutes and our abs. And then we're going to imagine ice being dropped down the back of our shirt. And again, the postural pyramid. This is something, this is one of those everyday things. Now, because um, you know, I have a concavity on the left, I'm going to be breathing more into my back left side. And to do that, I just can't rotate backwards and breathe that way. What I want to do, I actually want to breathe that way, which is I want to breathe this way. So I can actually touch the side of my ribs, feel that rib cage expand more. I want this one expanding. As it's expanding, I can then start breathing more into the back. And I get that rotation happening because right now it's kind of like I've got the car up off the, uh, the ground so I can change the wheel, right? And that mid thoracic back extending, opening up. And I've got that big expansive breath through my diaphragm. Nice, some more great alignments there. Okay, so do that for a minute. This is one of those daily, daily exercises. So while we're working on alignment, I'm gonna do uh, some side planks. So side plank uh, for me uh, is great for targeting the lumbar section. So um, when it comes to the curve, when your lumbar curve, we wanna put your convex side down. Okay, so my, uh, my curve kind of goes to the right, comes to the left here. So I'm gonna put my convex side down 75% of the time. Now we can do the easy version, which is essentially using a knee. And we can just go like this. And we're getting a straight, we're getting that T. So we're getting a straight line here and a straight line here. Now what is this doing? Well, if I don't, if my muscles aren't working, then I'm collapsing this way. So, so this right here is activating. This right here is activating my obliques, my core. And what's happening? To find balance, my body is having to align. It needs to be in alignment to hold this position. Okay. So I recommend starting with this. If you haven't done this before, this is work on the shoulder um, and wrists. Um, if you want an even easier version, there's this one right here. We can go onto your elbow. Okay. This is getting the job done. Um, and it's easy enough and it's working that 
lumbar area in particular. Uh, if you do want to, that's too comfortable. Although if you're correcting a curve, you probably want to do a little bit more. Um, and again, this is for any posture, even if you're dealing with more normal uh, uh, postural challenges, these, these planks are amazing. So um, I'll be training 75% of the time on the way down, roughly, approximately. This is all about flow. Please do not expect that there's, you know, a certain X number of exercises, a certain number of things to be doing in this way. It's really time and flow and listening to your body. So here we have the other plank, the other side. Nice and easy. We can put our feet there. We can even, um, another one is kind of just putting, putting both out. And then you actually kind of test both of your legs. If you want to get a bit more advanced. Okay, so that's the side plank. So there's a modification of the side plank, which actually targets more of the thoracic curve. So if this is, these exercises are proven to help if you have scoliosis, um, but even if you just have kyphosis or some other postural challenge, this is amazing for building your uh, entire core. Because to pull off these exercises, your muscles need to work together and they need to get into alignment. Um, so check yourself in the mirror, record yourself with a video so you can see your form and actually look at your back. The great rule of thumb here is, does your posture, does your, does your back look better when you actually do it? Does it go into alignment or does it go out of alignment? If it's going out of alignment and you're building strength and muscle in that position, it's probably not a great thing to be building uh, strength and muscle in. So for the thoracic, um, again, I'm training both sides, but I am gonna train a little bit more on my right side with my right side down. So um, I'll just do that. Now this is called the flying side plank and you can actually choose how difficult it is. So this is a bit more difficult because it's just my feet so if I'm, I'm I need to watch my form really carefully here breathing into alignment watching for my kyphosis correcting that this is really a way to align into my highest posture um, to cement and so this is actually even an easier version because I'm taking some of the weight off, right? So you can move the uh, whatever you're balancing on closer to you. Okay, I can do a little switch there. Once you're, you know, you're comfy there, you're getting your alignment in all the planes because we're looking for form, we're looking for symmetry. Okay. We want to aim for like a minute on each of these, but if you're losing the form, if you start sagging, stop the, uh, stop the plank and have a rest and try again in a couple minutes. Okay, so that's the flying side plank. <sighs> Amazing. What next? Walk around a little bit. <sighs> Let's do a quick uh, fascial maneuver here. Right foot over the left leg, right arm under the left arm, hugging our, our shoulders. Body's twisting to the left, head to the right. And get a bend in there. Exhale those tensions. Oh, 
Amazing. Switch it up. Left foot over the right, left arm under the left right arm. Head to the left. Oh, nice. Getting some nice alignments today. I know this morning I woke up feeling a little bleh. It's a gloomy day. So this is get into your body uh, and you'll, you'll feel like a completely different person, ready to win your day. Um, by winning your morning. So let's finish up with a bit of flow. Um, let's feel our new posture. I'm going to just gently drop the hips onto the ground. I'm going to take that opportunity, that bounce, to feel where my posture's at, to try less, and actually to stack better. So I'm trying to hold myself up less. I'm actually just looking to stack better. Is my head too far forward? I'm putting weight on my upper back. All right, so I'm bringing that back. Is my, are my, uh, is my button and pelvis popping out? Have I got that sway back going on? I'm all there just... Okay, let's go into the horse stance, big wide step, we're dropping down. We're gonna get some gentle, gentle rotation going on. If you haven't done this before, start, start wherever you can. Find your edge. It's about finding your edge of limit, your edge of range of motion and extending that day by day, showing up just like we are here, showing up and, and, uh, and giving yourself patience, love, attention. We're getting it done, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, that's all it takes. And day by day, you start building your new posture. Nice. Feeling my hips open up right here. This is also activating our organs when our fists hit our back. We're getting our lymphatic system going. We're going to do a Tibetan right. So we're gonna sit. This is also working up our shoulder and wrist strength, which is gonna help. But today we're just gonna do a little bridge all the way back. Okay, so during the horse stance, I noticed I had some, some tightness in my neck and jaw. So let's do a, a neck fascial release. So we're gonna hold our chest, look up, feel that stretch. You can see my voice is changing because of the stretch. So I'm gonna poke my tongue to the left and to the right. Left. Oof. 
Oof. Oh, I gotta keep going on that one. That one's too good. Oof. Okay. Amazing daily flow number three in the bag. Thank you for showing up. Thank yourself for showing up. This is where a beautiful life begins by connecting to the beauty inside you, that opportunity you have to do something about your situation. By taking responsibility of your body, you are becoming the builder of your body. Nobody else is coming to save you. Nobody else can force you to do these movements. Sure, you can go and get assistance and guidance and coaching and watch videos and tutorials, but it's you every single day that is coming up, showing up, showing up for yourself, giving your body the time and the space, right? The expansion it needs to open up into an entirely new posture. So thanks for showing up. We'll see you in the next one.